Life is full of ups and downs. Sometimes we win and other times we lose. In some cases, the loss is so hard that it drops you to the lowest level possible. Yes, rock bottom. It is the point where we all the odds are stacked against you. Your chances of recovery are slim to none. At rock bottom, you have no one but yourself to rely on. Unfortunately, through life's challenges and many of us will probably reach this level at some point of our lives however the experience of each and every one will greatly depend how we will perceive such hardship what if your organization or your country or the world hits rock bottom what is your role as the leader should be Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to Season 7 of EI Cafe with Azim. I'm your host, Azim Sahid, a human capital specialist, a Lego series play facilitator, emotionally intelligent practitioner, and ICF certified coach as well. Here we are again for another interesting topic, a 30 minutes of valuable learning. You heard the title, you heard the introductions. We are going to talk about rising strong from the rock bottom. Of course I have a fantastic individual who's a leader who has been looked up in Sri Lankan context very much without any further ado let me welcome Sarin the chief executive officer of Emmaus Crida Thank you Azim Hi Sarin the how are you Thank very you. good morning Pleasure to, to be you. here morning Right. So, Sarinda, once and for all, most thank you very much for checking into the cafe uh, and helping us to really, you know, very interesting topic. I think why I picked up this is a very timely topic. <coughs> we have been, um, especially the Sri Lankan context, we have been really roaming around this particular area. Of course, the whole globe is heading to this particular area. That's why I thought, let's look at look at from a leadership perspective uh, on this particular topic. Uh, why why it's important rising strong from important um i would like to ask you this first question from your perspective what is your view of hitting rock bottom is it good is it bad or is it going to be an ugly scenario i think that depends a lot on the individual and the organization and the circumstances of how it happens i don't think there's a simple answer for that Right. uh generally the the when you say somebody is hitting rock bottom it implies a huge level of negativity and uh, i think we face situations like that first with the east bombing and then with the economic crisis and horrendous governance that we had that brought us down to our knees um so this country has been at rock bottom for i would say the last 2 to 3 years we've really been bouncing along the uh, the bottom um but i also see that this is a time if, i i think this is where the depth of character in the individual and the depth of character in an organization of a nation really comes shining through the stronger the individual or the organization is from a character point of view from a culture point of view from a uh, personality point of view i think your chances of bouncing back are much stronger so i personally like to think that rock bottom is a time where it's like the um uh this is the bravery of the dead uh, where you have nothing to lose you have absolutely nothing to lose so it's a great time for you to experiment try new things try new, get creative mm. redesign yourself redesign mm. your organization mm. and try and go after new goals invariably what happens is when we try to set ourselves new targets new goals new ambitions we have the security of our existing situations that almost create a, a comfort level that you don't want to leave out of it's like a draw backwards mm-hmm. whereas when you have literally lost all that mm-hmm. and you have nothing to fall back or hold you back to your with no hindrances mm-hmm. then your creativity and your um, your desire to succeed is a lot greater mm-hmm. now that too some people in a situation of defeat will be completely shattered and they won't want to 
you know, step up and try and make a difference. But I think this is where I, as I said several times already, the depth of character comes into play. Fantastic. I think depth of character. Okay. Now, you know, um, I, 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 of course, I, you mentioned that we were supposed to meet at 10 and we said 11 and you said you're watching an MMA match, right? So let me put that particular metaphoric element getting hitting rock bottom. Two people in the ring. Of course, one is going to win. Other one is going to hit rock bottom. How that particular attitude comes in this particular topic? Again, we are faced with a choice. You can either say, I lost this fight. I'm going to retire and I'm going to go and farm tomatoes or something like that. No, you have that option. Otherwise, you say, okay, I lost this fight. I lost because of these reasons. This is the areas where I showed weakness. What can I do to um, strengthen those weaknesses? And I get a coach to uh, you know, work on my wrestling or my kickboxing or my boxing. And then I uh, come back and, and fight again as a better, more complete person. Mm -hmm. Or you can decide to do something completely different. You can go and become a fisherman. Absolutely. <laughs> so there's so a choice. Think, yeah. There are choices. Absolutely. You all have choices. Yep. You all get choices. Fantastic. Fantastic. Right. So we are talking about little, this bit of an attitude. Now, we all know that our country, of course, the, the, the tagline is the you know 75 years, 74 years, so-called years. And this is the you know from difficult financial crisis or the whole crisis, let's say in general. We are in this utter meta, you know, deep um, area. We have saying we have hit rock bottom. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not quite sure what, what to say. But then again, this has been impacted a massive, you know, in terms of corporates, in terms of businesses. Everybody's struggling. On that note, and, and especially the industry you are in, it's, it's apparel industry, one of the major income revenue you know, dollar which comes to the organization or the country itself. And we do have external factors like Russia, Ukraine war. Inflation is hitting high rocket in Europe. There's a gas issue in US, which Europe uses US as major markets of your. Now, considering this element with our country situation, how about your people? Are they insecure feeling? Are they with fear? How do you manage? How do you all manage them to really keep them momentum, bring that attitude, the character up? What is your role in that? So, Azim, in, in our situation, we have been very fortunate because uh, the organization I work with, well, not for much longer. I'm uh, resigning at the end yeah, of the month. Yeah, I saw but, the tweet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go on a new adventure. Um, but... In, it, let's talk about the organization. You know, we are an extremely stable organization, a part of an extremely stable group. And we deal with an extremely stable single customer that, especially Creda, deals with an extremely stable global leader as a customer mm -hmm. who is, ex I, I feel, very secure in the marketplace right now. So mm -hmm. our position was a lot of comfort based on the fact that we have this very strong foundation and support structure around mm -hmm. us. So for us, the most important thing was to take care of our people. So if you look at the different crises that we faced, first we had COVID. During COVID, the crisis was health-related. So we had to make sure that people were fed, clothed, because we had to shut our organization down. We didn't know there was a lot of uncertainty as to um, how long we would have to stay shut. So we took measures to ma make sure that we were financially secure, which the organization was. Senior levels, we had to reduce, um, uh, we took pay cuts, but at junior levels, we didn't touch anybody's pay because we realized how difficult it is. We ensured that we had welfare systems and all that to take care of our people through the worst of that crisis. Then we set our plans up in such a way that we took the highest levels, most stringent levels of health and safety, put them in place and ensured that our workers were safe when they came to work because we had to get back to work to service our customer, get back to work because the economy was heavily dependent on uh, dollars coming in through the apparel sector. The hotel, the tourism sector had pretty much died. So on that basis, we really took care of our people, their, their welfare, their health, um, their families, their communities to ensure that they felt safe and secure. Mm -hmm. So that was the first thing. If you also look at the customers that we deal with, any one of us, right, in, in the apparel sector, sorry, we are rarely dealing with the customer as their only supplier. 
we are part of a supply chain network that could be 20, 30, 100, 200 suppliers. So where I'm going, getting to with this is that if you, through quality, through service, through dependability, through reliability, all that, through responsibility, responsible to the planet, who you are as an organization, position yourself as one of the most dominant suppliers to any customer, then that customer is also going to be extremely concerned about your survival and they are going to be supportive of your survival. So that you have to position yourself as somebody who is indispensable to your partner. Being another player, you'll get chopped. If the market gets uh, difficult, you'll get chopped. If you are a dominant player who needs to, you know, they need you as much as you need them, that symbiotic kind of relationship being there, then they will ensure that your safety is maintained as well. So maybe preferential order, disp uh, you know, disbursement, whatever it may be, that that uh, preferential treatment will keep you getting going through the tough times. All right. But so you have to yeah. differentiate that. Right. Yeah. So he, here, what I'm getting, you talked in the overall corporate context, right? Let me to put in an individual context. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I've understood. If an individual is not generalized let's say if sarinda is unique on this particular area sarinda is um you know has his own niche area of dealing with people and the leadership style and quality of the character even you hit rock bottom the chances are high that you rise strong isn't it i think so i really firmly believe so because it is your attitude it is are you a defeatist or are you a, a you know a, a winner kind of positive glass half full or glass uh, half empty um, and when we see crisis, and trust me, I've lived in, I've worked in this environment for 35 years, almost, mm -hmm. yeah, for a long time. And we've been through the LTT war, we've been through the JVP insurrections, we've been through successive disastrous governments, mm -hmm. we've been through, you know, constitutional crisis, Aragalias, uh, COVID, it's Easter bombings, name it, we faced it. And we have been very resilient as organizations, as individuals, to be able to bounce back from that. Unfortunately, we haven't found a governance structure in this country that supports the extremely successful businesses that we have been able to, um, uh, have, that have developed in this country. Mm -hmm. Our government, governance structure has been disastrous. Successive yeah. governments have failed. Mm -hmm. And unless that happens, uh, that there is some kind of stability given to us from an external framework, from a government point of view, we'll always be swimming against the tide, even as organized. That's why most of our, uh, our successful organizations are looking for growth outside the country. Mm. Mm. But we have such an amazing opportunity to turn this place around that I think every time we get knocked down, we find new ways to bounce back up. Yeah. No? So we, we, we can, we have the attitude, we have the ability, we have the technology, we have the creativity, to be able to be world class, what we mm. don't have is national level leadership, mm. Mm. and we will always fight against that until, in my opinion, some new politicians come in and new qualified, um, mature, visionary leaders come in, not the clowns that we have had all this time. We need we need change. Yeah. Until that time, any organization, any individual living in this country is going to struggle. Mm. It's going mm. to struggle. To we will succeed. But it's like swimming with a 20, 20 kilo weight uh, tied to your legs. How much you come up, you go to <laughs> again. It's pulling you, it's pulling you down. So you have to try hard. Yeah. So what I'm really getting and leading to my next questions. We do have so talented people. We do have a lot of resilient mindset and an attitude. And you know, as you said, we have gone through, I don't know, any other country has gone through like this, but and of course, tsunami, I think one thing we missed and we came back very fast. Uh, yeah, we missed that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in the corporate context, let's let's compare Sri Lanka versus the corporate context. People are resilient, but the top layer is killing us, right? And here again, in an organizational context, does this culture matters a lot to drive strong? Because in the country aspect, people are good, but the top layer, the culture, is not setting us the right standard for us to really become the developing or developed country i don't know when it's going to happen because we are in the poor status now at least now it has changed because for last 30 40 years we're developing yeah um 
on the organized context, people might be resilient, but the culture is not helping. How does it going to help the organization to go? Um, the or, very same. Or is it the leadership only? Is the question. The very same rules apply in an organization as it does as the way I'm being critical of a country uh, right now of this country. Um, if an organization, and I've seen it uh, happen several times, not several times, but you know, I've seen it happen, where an organization will um, will develop under a particular leadership for a particular period of time, and then there's, there's a change in leadership, and then there's a complete change in culture. And that is not necessarily a bad thing. Mm. Because organizations need to change. They need to devolve. They can't be under one kind of same level, uh, leadership for a long period of time. But if, for example, the leadership that comes into an organization is very um, numbers oriented or very pessimistic or very uh, defensive or, or very controlling, that could mean that a lot of people in that organization who don't like to work in that environment would move out. And it'll be difficult. So as they say, people leave leaders, not organizations. Mm -hmm. And I feel it is really important that leadership, and I'm not, please don't, uh, you know, think that I'm trying to allude to anything that's going on in, in my present life. My decision making was very different. There was a very different uh, reason as to why I'm leaving an organization. Um, I'm just going on a new adventure. <laughs> but, uh, it's okay. uh, but, organizations yes if the leader and i've seen it in small organization i've seen it in big organizations if the leader brings in a very pessimistic negative kind of culture the people who would not enjoy that environment will leave mm -hmm. they will take it for a little while and they will leave and you will be left with the conformists the people who have no drive to you know do things uh, mm -hmm. no creativity no entrepreneurship they who are just followers, the sheep will be there. Passengers. The passengers will be there because they are just hanging on the bus and getting their monthly salary and going home. Mm. But the people who really bring drive mm. into the organization will be like, I can't work on these people. I'm out of here. Mm. Thank God. Mm. 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 And we see that. And it's happened to several large organizations in this country and around the world. Mm. So I think I'm really curious to know before I move on, I, I'm trying to link to this. Now, you said culture is important and leaders play a vital role, right? Now, as a corporate facilitator, I've been in an organization, you know, we have been training or facilitating all parts of the organization. Sometimes, bottom layer comes and tell, look, whatever we do, it doesn't make sense. When you go back, our leaders are not supporting, right? On the other hand, leaders are saying, okay, look, we are doing our best to our people, but they are not resilient. They don't have this attitude. They just want to be the passengers. Now, where is what is this synergy is missing? What is this exactly as a leader need to look at this particular perspective? Especially this context, this side of a context, because what I'm trying to do is a talent is the next question I have. It's very rare to, very difficult to pick talent now. What is your it is. And then and and okay, let's look first at the part that you were talking about, where that there's a gap in uh, understanding where it's going at. And then we'll take the talent piece next. If you're looking at that, one of the one of the biggest issues that we um, face is the lack of communication. And leaders need to communicate, and especially at a time of crisis, you need to communicate ten times more. Mm -hmm. Say it, say it again, say it again, say it again. No, just just keep say it, say it, say it, say it, say it again. Just you have to keep talking to people about what the message is and give them a, a they, in a in a situation like we were facing with uh, COVID, for example, or what we were facing with uh, with the economic crisis and uh, and now the global crisis and everything that's going on. You have to have a clear story that you're going to tell people to give them hope and comfort. Mm -hmm. Fear is the thing that makes people leave organizations. Uncertainty is the thing that makes people leave organizations. So if you can give people the comfort at a time of crisis and say, we have a plan, here's the plan. This mm -hmm. is how it's going to work. This is why it's going to work. We need you on board for this. And make them feel that they are an integral part of that journey going forward. You have done half your job and finished. Retaining people, there are two, there are two things. One is the organization. Right? The organization can support people 
if the organization is financially secure enough and big enough, it can secure people in the areas that they fear the most. The well-being of their families, the education of their children, yeah. health and security, um, you know, housing, that kind of stuff. Those are things that really worry people. Maslow's hierarchy of need. If the first two quadrants aren't taken up, people are going to be really scared. And they're going to try leaving. So even, the, even in a situation where you've got a country in dire straits like we are in right now, mm -hmm. an organization's strength can, in fact, be more positive. At your age or my age, we're very, very different <laughs> ends of the spectrum here. But uprooting your life and going to another country and starting your life all over again is not something people do with willingly. It's almost, yeah. un it's like, oh God, I had, you know, because this is all familiar. My situation is very different. Again, I'm going to qualify and say that I'm going to be going back and forth and I'm, I'm going to have fun. That's a different story. But I'm not uprooting my life and going and be, I'm building a business somewhere else, but I'll still be, mm. you know, mm. one leg in Sri Lanka, one leg, one, one leg elsewhere. But for somebody who has to take their children and the cat and the dog and everybody yeah. and go, it's a huge, huge upheaval of life. So mm. if you could take care of 60%, 50%, 60% of the actual fears that they have, that motivation to leave won't be there. Mm. You have to mm. show them that their futures are being taken care of. The biggest fears that they worry about will be taken care of. Mm. Children's education is a massive thing. Mm. Massive mm. thing. And in large organization, taking care of children's education, it's an investment for not just parents, for the children as well. Because now... I have been in this industry for 20, 20, 22 years now. I have seen children that we supported through O-levels and A-levels qualify with top degrees in engineering, in finance, wow. and come and work in the organization and add a tremendous amount of value. Why? Because that emotional connect is there with the organization. They're like, this organization took care of us. Mm. they are great people to work with they'll take care of me even in my workplace Fantastic. you create that emotional connect there are opportunities that we can uh, uh, that will never come in a crisis well, somebody said never waste a good crisis right Yeah. yeah. Um, I can't remember who it was Churchill or I don't know who it was but <laughs> never somebody. waste a good crisis um, so I think there are opportunities that come in a crisis where we can develop partnership strength and um, and bonds mm. that you can't do at normal in normal times. So don't waste this crisis. Absolutely. Now you you are spot on because why I'm on that, that that was my uh, actually my next question, which is really clarified. Now I, I saw a tweet: ten thousand IT professionals left the country for this year. Doctors are leaving. And some people are just leaving. They have no idea. Just traveling to Middle East. With they're just going. Unemployed. They're just going. Just going. They, as you said, they're just leaving the job. At least they have. Because they have it rock bottom. I'm not sure. But again, the choice, what you said in the earlier of the conversation, is the choice I think they're making. Again, yep. the resilience mindset. No, leaving out everything and just going something they have, they have not seen is also, I guess, some sort of, you know, ability to really hit i think talent management is retention is i think in many organizers need to look out for because mm -hmm. it's, it's not only just skill development i think as you said it's about taking care of the emotional part connecting with the emotion i think that's uh, that's yeah that's really important i guess so thank you very much for sharing that particular line and i'm, I'm coming for an interesting question i think um, you know as you said emotional connection retaining people and make that legacy count, you know, their children coming into it. I'm going to talk about Elon Musk. Strategy in terms of Twitter. You know, asking people to work around the clock or leave. What is your take in terms of that sort of leadership? Because I'm looking at a perspective from a top level leader or an entrepreneur. I think um, you can check it out because people from just say, we see just the behavior part of Elon Musk, but we don't see the thinking part or the behavior, the number part. What is your so it's difficult, you know, all of us are making judgment based on looking at it from the outside and what we read on Twitter and in, in, in news. 
Uh, but I think we have to look at it in the context of what uh, Elon Musk is trying to do and what the where Twitter is as an organization. So forget what Twitter does. Just think of it as a pure business. And Elon Musk is coming into an alien business. He's taking it over and he wants to change it around. Um, you know, there's a particular culture that has been involved. There has been a particular, so he's trying to change this whole thing uh, there. Now, he, what he's trying, in any organization, there are times. Now, personally, I have been one of the biggest, uh, um, the people who have pushed work from home, work from anywhere concept, the hardest at the group that I work in. I have pushed it extremely hard and we practice it extremely carefully and not carefully, but preciously. Like we don't allow anybody to leave. We tell people you have to stay at home, whatever it is, the numbers are there. So in a situation like that, if suddenly you're facing a real crisis, now if I walk into an organization where half the people are working from home and we're in crisis mode, I would want to get people to come in and work mm -hmm. their butt off to make sure that we come out of that mode. Now, I don't know the financials of Twitter. I haven't been I haven't gone into the details of all those things. But if they if Twitter is in a crisis and it has to be turned around, asking people for their fullest commitment for a period of time is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. However, if his attitude is, I want everybody to come here and work, you know, 24 hours a day for the next God, whatever, because you all are whatever, you know, if the attitude is just a case of getting people to come to work and throwing his power around, I would have been the first to say, bye-bye, I'm out of here. Mm. Now, if he has painted a vision to these guys and said, okay, this is where we are, here is where we are going, but I need your commitment to make it happen. You need to come in and work. Mm. Bust your asses for the next three months. We will get there. How it is framed, we don't know. Because the last people you can believe are journalists and press. Yeah. <laughs> they're even worse. Sometimes they're even worse than the politician because Absolutely. they're just twisting around to make it sound sensational. Yeah. Story. Right? So so I think what we have to do is in the context of coming into an ailing business, turning it around and making it profitable so that it'll last the mm -hmm. foreseeable future, I think it's very important that we then give him the benefit of the doubt and say he's doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. He's just being an asshole. Then, then <laughs> people must make their own decisions and say, "I don't want to work for this dude." Yeah. Yeah. Out of here. I think I, I have think... had the for I have had the good fortune of actually listening to him speak. Um, when my son graduated from university, he was the chief guest, and he came right. and gave a uh, a speech. And I can't say that I was impressed by the way he spoke, but I have followed his progress, and he's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant man. Absolutely. I think I think the point what you said before in, when we talk about the culture, the communication factor is important, right? And I think he, he he knows that people will be like talking about this factor, you no, know, and a lot of things will come in. But then again, we don't know what's inside him, what is yeah. running. So. so so the reason I said that I wasn't impressed with him as a speaker is because I feel he is as genius as he is, his ability to communicate is not great. The way he communicates is not great. Mm. So the message, how he packages it and delivers it may not be great, but I think what he's trying to achieve here mm. could be quite mm. legitimate. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So it's very important. The communication piece is something that we totally underestimate. That's why they say leaders need to be charismatic and have presence and personality because that way when leaders, sometimes leadership is all about being able to tell a story. And making people be like, wow, you yeah. know, like I want to follow this story. Right. And that's why I joined the group that I worked in because we had a very charismatic leader at, um, uh, who, who was somebody who was a visionary. And I just want to be like, wow, you know, I want to be a part of this story. Absolutely. I think that's that's matter. The storytelling matters. And 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 here, here's what I'm getting it for you to rising strong from the wrong bottom. You as leaders communicate 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 keep them informed connect them emotionally uh, and have a good story exactly build a story around and make sure that show the path rather than just keep it in a closet and just hide it away thank you very much Ananda, for sharing that so as we are coming to the end of our conversation Ananda, what would be a one or two key takeaways for our listeners there can be leaders there can be followers there can be anyone um whom do you think what what is your key message you want to drive through hitting I, rock button I, and I, rising I, strong 
I really feel that you need to have a a a, a dream. An organization, I know they call it purpose, they call it vision, they call it North Star. You can call it whatever the hell you want to call it. But each one of us as an individual, we have we should have a dream. Mm -hmm. And we should never falter in our direction towards that dream. We shouldn't see a pitfall as being or something not happening that way as being, oh shit, my dream is over. There are many ways to get to the targets that we want to go to, mm -hmm. where we want to get to. And sometimes you just have to take the road path less traveled. Sometimes, you know, the organization you're in could be going on a journey in one direction and your dream is to get somewhere else. So as long as you stay in this organization that's going in that direction, you're never going to get to your dream. Yeah. So never lose track of where you want to go as an individual. Mm -hmm. And if you're a leader of an organization, never lose track of where you want to go as an organization. There are always different paths that you have to, missions and visions are where you are sidestepping and you know, you're kind of taking care, uh, advantage of um, current situations. Purposes are your ultimate, where you Fantastic. want to get to. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Sunny, for that particular insight and input. Truly amazing speaking to you. One more question uh, before I let you go, right? Uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm trying to promote Sri Lankan tourism because most of my listeners are outside Sri Lanka, about 60% are outside of Sri Lanka. All five continents, 200 plus audience listening in. Um, what's your favorite travel destination in Sri Lanka you have experienced? Oh my God, that's like asking me which of my children <laughs> is my favorite. I love, I love traveling in Sri Lanka. It's something that I do extensively. I'll give you three locations. All right. Okay. Is that right. okay? That's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Horton Plains. Okay. Vilpatu National Park. Nice. And Mana. Fantastic. Fantastic. So thank you very much for sharing that. Of course, you will hear uh, one particular place uh, on this podcast uh, as a note. Uh, for the, all the listeners out there to listen. And of course, visit Sri Lanka. It's a beautiful country. As uh, Sandra said, you have, you, you have all the climates in Sri Lanka, believe me. So you can check in. Please make your next destination as Sri Lanka to travel your holidays. So and everything that, within about three to four hours of driving. Maybe that's, five hours that's, of driving. That's, that's the best part of it. Yeah. So, so that's the time that we have, ladies and gentlemen. My tea takeaway, key takeaway is communication is vital. Uh, then you want to rise from the rock bottom as a leader, right? As yourself as well. And I hope our, our listeners got plenty of different elements today from Sarinda. Thank you very much, Sarinda, for uh, checking in. So our guest today was Sarinda, Chief Executive Officer of MS Creda. I hope, uh, yeah, he, he might be leaving soon. So, so far, he is the CEO. <laughs> right, let's keep it in the way. Sarinda, thank Two you weeks. very much. <laughs> Two weeks from now. Thank you very much for your valuable time. And it's a pleasure uh, talking to you as well. My pleasure. Take care. All the best.